When I projected my solution to the screen in front of everyone, uh, a hush fell across the room, and I could tell they were not impressed at all. <laughs> uh, at this point, I started getting really... Ah! The... The... The beach! <laughs> How's it going, everyone? And welcome to Fire Pit Time with your host, the Los current Los Angeles tech lead here. Now, I've seen a lot of videos online of people studying for three months at a coding boot camp, cracking out those lead code challenges, and then getting a job at Google or Facebook or one of these huge companies. But no one's really talking about the times that they fail. And in my experience, if you're not failing at least 80% of the jobs you're interviewing for, you're not interviewing for good enough jobs. So I wanted to dig up a story for y'all uh, from about seven years ago when I was actively interviewing fresh out of school. This is definitely the worst interview I have ever done in my entire life. So let's start from the beginning. I was scouring Hacker News for job postings and I managed to find this startup out in San Francisco who's hiring a full stack developer. I reached out to him on Hacker News, talked back and forth a little bit, and they sent me a take home coding challenge. Now these take home coding challenges are pretty common with some of the earlier stage companies and pretty much non-existent for the bigger tech companies. People who have the best advantage for these take home challenges are usually extremely junior, uh, have a lot of free time because they're not working currently, and usually have no other responsibilities, don't have a wife or a husband and child free. Luckily, when I was 21 years old, that's exactly what I was. So I was willing to pull off any stop to get this. They told me it would probably take about four hours to do. I probably spent the entire weekend on this, probably 20 hours straight, making sure it was absolutely perfect. Spent the weekend, submitted it off to them on Sunday night. On Monday, they responded back saying it looked great and they wanted to set up a phone screen. And then again, on the phone screen, we talked about the coding challenge. They were really impressed. They're super happy that I didn't do anything too complicated like the instructions said, and I didn't use some crazy, frame, uh, crazy complicated framework like Backbone.js or Ember.js. And yeah, that's how long ago this interview was. This was back when Backbone.js was brand new. Uh, and now it's all React. But don't worry, in about two and a half, three years from now, well, I'll be looking at this video and laughing that I'm saying we're using React because everyone else will just be using REST at that point for everything. From there, they scheduled my flight from Canada to San Francisco. I flew out a few weeks later, woke up the morning of the interview, wide awake, made my way to the office at 10 in the morning, and that's when things started to go a little bit downhill. <laughs> the first interview they gave me was they had me program a Craigslist uh, apartment listing scraper using just PHP. And this was interesting because instead of having me code in front of them, they had me sit at the table with the other engineers and just kind of do it on my own for half an hour and then present it to the team. This challenge went pretty well. I was able to do the scraper. I was, didn't know some of the APIs that PHP had because I hadn't used it in a while, but I was able to get the right answer. They seemed pretty happy with it. I was brought to another room and we did more of a more traditional systems design interview. And for those who don't know what that was, that's when they take you through kind of a real world problem and they ask how you'd architect a system to solve it. I can't remember exactly what the question was, but it was something to do with creating a system that could ha handle millions of connections at once. Unfortunately, at that point, all my interview experience had been working on projects that maybe only five people used a day, maybe 10 people a month used. So I didn't really know I didn't have the experience to really know how to answer that question. From there we went and had lunch. Lunch interviews are mostly just them seeing what your hang ability is like, them seeing if you're the kind of person that they could hang out with outside the office and they get along with. So generally I'm a pretty friendly person, so I like to think I do well on these lunch screens. Back to the office, we had a more traditional data structures and algorithms question. And I was already a little bit nervous at this because I in the past hadn't do too well on these types of questions, but I was able to figure out the right answer, but I was only after throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall, seeing what sticked, and I could tell the person interviewing me wasn't that impressed. Uh, even though I had the right answer, I'm pretty sure it wasn't efficient enough. I had another more practical programming challenge. This was creating the game Snake, which is that game where you have a little snake that went around eating different apples and growing as you ate the apples. 
100% in JavaScript and HTML with only about a half an hour. I started coding that, and normally I was pretty strong in JavaScript, but I just like hit a small roadblock the first five or ten minutes in and didn't like use my time well enough to really complete it in a decent way. So after half an hour, they had me present this solution in front of the entire engineering team, like on a projected onto the screen. And I could tell within the first four seconds that they were not impressed at all. After that challenge, they brought me to another room and my point of contact came in and said, okay, look, I'll be honest with you. You're not doing that well, man. We're just wondering, uh, when you were doing the take home challenge, did you have any like extra help or from anyone or did you do it 100% by yourself? And that's when I started feeling really embarrassed because I knew I wasn't doing that well, but I didn't think I was doing so badly that, I, that they thought that I cheated on the take home challenge. <laughs> so I clarified like, no, 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 I did this all by myself. I just get kind of nervous in interviews. I haven't used PHP in a while. 600%, 6,000% I did this by myself. He said, okay, well, we'll just continue with the interview then, uh, no big deal. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just keep going. I, at this point, I'm extremely nervous. And it's about 6 o'clock at night at this point. So remember, I came at about 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning, and now it's 6. So I've been there for 8, 8.5 hours at this point, doing interview after interview after interview. At this point, the company starts pouring glasses of wine. Uh, they all gather in the front part of the company. So about 30 of them. They had me stand in front of everyone, and they said, okay, this question we ask everyone, we ask the software engineers, we ask the receptionists, we just, we just want to know how you think. Normally these whiteboard coding interview things, uh, at the time I thought were kind of stupid, but now that I'm older, a bit more mature, I realize given the ways we know how to interview people, asking these data structures and algorithms are pretty fair game, and I can kind of see the value in it. However, this question was not a data structure and algorithm question, and I think it was actually really stupid <laughs> and I'll never forget it. It was, you have a hundred lockers in a row and they're all closed. You walk by them all once and you cl open all the doors. You walk by them a second time and you close every other door. You walk by them a third time and you toggle every third door. A fourth time you toggle every fourth one, fifth time you toggle every fifth one. How many lockers are open after you've walked through a hundred times? So at this point, I take a deep breath for myself take the whiteboard marker, put it on the whiteboard, and thought, there's no way I'm getting this job. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have a flippin' clue how to answer this question. But luckily, I just laughed to myself. I have a good attitude and thought, you know what? Let's just try my best here. No, har no harm, no foul. Nobody's going to die if I don't get this right or wrong. And so I worked my way through the question, again, in front of about 25 or 30 people. I understand wanting to know how someone thinks, but if you want to know how I think on a whiteboard asking a math problem in front of 30 people, I can tell you right away, I think extremely poorly. <laughs> and so if you need someone to do that kind of work, uh, you definitely don't want to hire me for that. But if you need someone to ship code and get along with everyone and have a good time, that's definitely the job for me. Uh, I figure out the answer with some help. Turns out if you ever get this question, the trick is every number that's a perfect square, the locker is open. There you go. And from there, they brought me to another room, and the whole company went off to their own room to decide whether or not to hire me. As I'm sitting in this other room by myself, I just laugh again to myself, thinking, yeah, there's no way I'm getting this. Absolutely no way I'm getting this job. And then someone comes in, my main point of contact, and he says, OK, so you seem like a great guy great culture fit. Honestly, I could see myself working with you, but unfortunately there's just too many red flags on the tech side. So we're going to have to not move forward, but it was great meeting you. I really loved your attitude. I responded back saying, you know what? No problem. Just business and no hard feelings. Thanks for the feedback. I appreciate it. And he said, see like right there, that's a great, great attitude right there. I wish we could just hire you and just, you could just hang out, but unfortunately we can't. And as I'm leaving, this interview, I'm not going to lie, I was feeling pretty down, feeling kind of sad, uh, especially with all the effort and it's a really stressful eight or nine hours doing all that. 
But then I made my way back to the hotel and I was eating some dinner and I realized, wait, this was a expense report app. <laughs> like there's plenty of tasks that they can give a junior engineer with a heart of gold on an expense report app, especially if they're willing to work on like whatever. But now I'm realizing there's actually not a shortage of software engineers. There's a shortage of excellent software engineers. There's plenty of software engineers in India, China, Ukraine that can just do the bare minimum. And they're way cheaper than the people living out here. So to really succeed in this industry, you really got to get, you really have to put in the time and effort and focus to get these jobs because there's actually a lot of competition, especially on the bottom rung. However, it's all really doable and it all ended up working out for me. Instead of moving to San Francisco, I moved to Los Angeles and ended up finding a great company here and starting a heavy metal band. So all in all, life worked itself out and is absolutely perfect. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, ring that notification bell and subscribe so you can see the next couple of videos I post. Uh, I always screw up the last part. <laughs> I'm going to be talking a lot more about what it's like living in Los Angeles, working your day job as a software engineer while following your dreams doing music or working in the entertainment industry. If you have any questions about anything about what it's like working in tech or working in LA, please leave a comment. I'd love to make another video answering it in the future. Until then, I'll catch you until next video. Thanks again.